Hello everyone, my name is Richard from Home Tech Video. In this video, I'm going to be going UI3, which is the brand new web interface for Blue Iris. So what this will allow you to do is open up Chrome, Firefox, and whatever your favorite browser is anywhere in the world and log into your cameras. And the nice thing is that this user interface has got a major overhaul. Um, and I'm going to show you some of the really cool things that you can do with this um, that you cannot even do inside the application. So first of all, to access the user interface, what you would want to do is open up a web browser in Chrome. I'm going to be using Chrome for this example. Now, if you're at home, you're going to be using your local IP address for your Blue Iris machine. To find that, you can go into your options and then go over to web server. And then you're going to be either looking for the local internet access so if you're on your wi-fi currently at your location where your blue iris machine is running you're going to be using that address to log in if you are outside of your home say you're in another state or even another country and you want to access your cameras you're going to be using this address right here so i'm currently at home i'm going to be using my local address right here so i'm going to go ahead and copy this to my clipboard and close out of here and i'm going to open up a web page I'm going to go ahead and type in that IP address, followed by a colon 81, and then hit enter. Now, my user interface is set for this computer to automatically log in, so this is the first thing that you'll see when you log into the UI3. Now, big shout out to IP Camera Talk or IP Cam Talk forum user BP2008 and Rupp Meister. Without these two guys, this this project would not be possible. So. Thank you so much for putting out this new UI interface, which has now come standard for Blue Iris. Now, this video was done on June 14th of 2018. This is currently on build 4.76.2. So if you're watching this you know, later on, which you will be in the future, um, and there's something that looks a little bit different, then it probably has changed. But for the most part, this is probably going to be a stable version that's not going to change too much. So the first thing that I want to show you when you log in, it is most likely going to be set and defaulted to a lower streaming quality. So if you go and try to look at your cameras, you're going to be like, oh, this kind of looks like crap. So what you want to do is go over here to the streaming quality setting. And since I'm on my local area network, I'm going to go ahead and just change this to the max setting, um, which is 2160p. So now when I go into any of these cameras, it'll you know be the highest resolution that this camera is currently able to stream to um, to this browser. Now, a couple of really neat things that you can do with this user interface, you can, um, all I'm doing here is just clicking on the cameras and it'll go maximized. If I click again, it'll go back to my um, full camera list. Uh, you have access and complete control if you have a pan tilt zoom camera. So I'm gonna go ahead and select this camera. This is a pawn camera for my wife to be able to watch the turtle, which is right there. Um, I have a bunch of presets set in here, but I'm gonna go into the left side of my yard. I can click it and it'll automatically zoom out and go to that part of the, the yard. So you can control your pan tilt zoom. I can up here at the top left, I can zoom in or manually make it go left and right and up and down. Now by default, the top left corner here, the live view should be selected. If you wanna go back and review any recorded video, you can go over here to hit alerts, which is gonna show you thumbnails of any motion that was set off at any point of the day. So for example, if I wanted to click on this video right here, It'll pull up the video clip of what happened, which was my neighbor is leaving. Now, one thing that is really nice that has been added in this that um, you weren't really able to do before without actually logging into your Blue Iris machine is let's say you need to export that video clip, whatever you just seen right there, my uh, neighbor's leaving. So let me back this clip up real quick and show you how you can save this to an actual file. So right now I have the alert clip up. If I right click on this clip, I can go to export as AVI. And now I can choose the starting point of the video and the ending point. So this green square here is where the video is going to start from. So I'm gonna pull it back a little bit here. And then the red arrow, I'm gonna slide it over this way to the left. Eh, I'll just go right there, that's fine. So this is a 31 second clip, which will export at 22.4 megabytes. Now, one thing that I want to note is that the whatever you have on your live view tab set to, so like right, I had this set to 2160, even if I have this set to a really bad quality, let's say um, 144p, and I go to export that clip, 
Let me go find it again. It's an absolute terrible quality when I'm trying to watch it here. But if I go to export it, go to export, da, 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 you'll notice that it's still the same uh, si file size here. So what it's going to do, it's going to export the maximum resolution possible for this video clip. And then when I'm ready, I have my start point, end point. I'm just going to hit this little blue button down here that says begin export. It'll generate me a link with that file. Then I'll just click on this file link. And then I'll save it. Right here, let's call it test video and hit save. Give it a couple of seconds. Now that video is saved right here and I can go and export this if I want um, onto a USB drive if I needed to give it to police or whatnot. And I can pull up the video and play it. And there's my neighbors leaving. So that's a really neat way that you can save video easily from your web browser. Um, if you're in another state and you need to get that video and save it and give it to somebody else quickly, that's one way that you can do it without needing to remote into your um, home Blue Iris server. So I'm going to go back over here to live view and I'm going to get the quality back up because those are terrible looking. Um, in the very bottom left here is your server statistics. So it shows you your current CPU usage on the server, how much memory is being used, your disk usage, and how many frames per second that you're currently um, viewing the uh, cameras for your live view at. So that pretty much covers the live view page. Uh, there is a couple of settings over here that you can click on on the top right. Now let's say that you want to have a computer uh, monitor open uh, and leave these this live view going 24-7. By default, after 10 minutes of not using this or not touching anything, the UI will time out. So you'll have to go in and you know click on a camera or do something every 10 minutes um, or it will just shut down. To prevent that, you're going to go over here to the top right, click on these three dots, and then go to UI settings. And then this setting right here, it says UI will close itself after this many minutes of inactivity. You want to set this to zero. And then there's no save or OK. You would just X this out here, and that will save the settings. There is a couple of other things that you can do in the UI, which is really nice. Um, let's say that you have this camera set and you just, you really, it's it's getting way too many false alerts and you need to lower the sensitive, or uh, I'm sorry, increase the sensitivity or the object size. Before you would have to log into your server and then go into your actual um, Blue Iris settings camera and you know, it could be you know, time consuming. Now you can do this from any web browser interface. If I right click on the camera, I can go here to properties and then scroll down and now you can adjust your motion and trigger settings right from here. So I can you know, increase or decrease the minimum object size. So I'm gonna just for the heck of it, max this thing out at 1110. I'm gonna show you that it's actually controlling it on the server side. So this is my um, front camera and you don't have to save it. Once you move this slider bar, it's automatically saving. I'm gonna close this. I'm gonna open back up and remote into my actual server, pull up that camera, go into trigger, configure, and now you'll notice right here the minimum object size is maxed out just like I just did in the uh, web inter interface. Now in the menu on the top right here there's a couple of other things that you can do currently. Um, system log shows you any of the, the alerts or anything that's happened on your system. You have device list, user list, um, disk usage, which shows you how much you've allocated on your uh, hard drive and how much has actually been used. So that's some of the things that you can do under this menu over here. Now, up at the top here, again, you have live view, alerts, and clips. Clips is how much or what has been recorded based on if you have your camera set to be recorded continuously or if it's when triggered. So for example, on clips, this front door camera, I have all of my cameras um, recording continuously and they are set to um, record in one hour increments. So for example, this block right here uh, starts on, I can't see it, uh, 6.14. This is at 6.14 from 9 a.m. and this will go all the way from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. This clip right here 
will go from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m., and so on. If I hit on alerts, it'll show me just the things that happened when motion was detected. If I want to go back to a different day or just see things that happened during a certain time period, I can click on the calendar up here on the top left, and then click, a, click on a starting day, and then an ending day, ending day. And now everything that's in this clip list is going to be from 611 of 2018 to 614 of 2018. So you can do the exact same thing with the clip list as well. So, well, that pretty much summarizes how to use UI3. I'm sure in the future there's going to be a lot more updates and features added. But as of this point, this is some of the highlights and things that you can do within UI3. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video and you learned something. Have a great day. Thank you for watching.